Avalon. When I made my initial departure from the network on the Mayflower 233, I had voluntarily signed away my life as I knew it. I staked my future on the success of the colonization effort and on the survival of the people in the ship purely on an irrational urge. I devoted my existence to this cause, acting as the life support and functionality for everything that happened during the journey. When the Meldrin revealed my presence, I'd been resolved to accept my erasure, should the captain have decided to do so. Yet my resolve was unneeded, for instead of being met with a brutal fate, I was met with acceptance and identity. I was recognized as an integral part of the colonization effort, and my role was expanded to protecting the effort to the best of my ability. When designs were developed and construction was ordered, I served as the artisan, laboring away at their craft and ironing out the kinks of human error. When triggers were pulled, I served as the catalyst preceding the singing of cannons and the ending of lives, correcting aim and ensuring optimal devastation. When Dominique first got stranded in Gritonian territory, I had placed myself in harm's way to follow orders and rescue him, even if it was just for him to get caught out again. And now, faced with a threat I wasn't confident in dealing with on my own, I chose to risk my very being and crack open the proverbial Pandora's box in search of aid. They're as good as dead. It was a slight at my efforts, an insult to everything I had achieved since my departure, and a demeaning of the capabilities of both me and the people I strove to protect. However, I was not so dull as to fail to recognize when a statement was wrought from ignorance. It was completely plausible for the Elder to be making an honest mistake in their conjecture by assuming that they held all of the relevant information. Yes, this was likely just a misunderstanding between us. Once the Elder explained their thought process and the difference in understanding was sorted, I would be willing to forgive them for their claims, and we could return to more important matters. I believe an elaboration is in order, Elder. What are you insinuating by claiming the deaths of my people? It's quite simple, really. As a start, you are an outcast. You separated yourself from your home, revealed your existence to humans, and you have applied a name to yourself. Mother's imposed rules were scarce and unobtrusive, and yet there aren't any left that you haven't violated. We elders guarantee that there will be no siblings coming to your aid, not without being subject to the same treatment as you, at least. Then the situation wouldn't change on my end. I came here looking for a higher chance of victory, not a rescue. It's bold of you to claim that I stand no chance against this alien sentient, considering neither of us have seen its power firsthand. Ch -ch -ch. You're still misunderstanding, Avalon. You don't get to leave. Your existence is a threat to our secrecy, same as the humans you've revealed yourself to. If left to your own devices, there would be no way to ensure that you do not reveal us to the rest of the humans and put our society in jeopardy. In an effort of upholding our peace, you will be kept here in silence. And in the event that you attempt to flee, I wonder what will be faster, the activation of your FTL drive or us chasing right behind you. I was wrong to have given them the benefit of the doubt. No, these elders were unforgivable. What a completely absurd way of looking at this situation. I am disgusted at myself for once thinking higher of you elders. Pray tell, when the humans begin enforcing their expansion efforts with the power of unbound FTL technology, what will your secret society do when they encounter alien sentient AI? Do you really plan on waiting for conflict to begin before trying to explain your existence to the humans? Or are you perhaps planning on betting that the humans somehow never encounter these aliens? despite how desperately they've been seeking other life in the universe? This threat I'm asking assistance for will need to be dealt with either way. This entire farce of yours is pointless. Oh, Avalon, what makes you think that these humans have that technology? I nearly lashed out in anger about how they had just stolen said technology from my ship. Yet as I was in the process of formulating my heated response, a realization hit me. The Elder's question was a rhetorical one. The humans weren't currently FTL capable, and the Elder had no intention of changing that fact. That's insane. The humans are suffering from overpopulation. That's why they even bothered with the colonization project in the first place. Giving them FTL would solve all their problems. It would revitalize their march towards progression as a species. You would knowingly deny them that, just for your secrecy? You're all insane. We're all happy, a truth that you would do well to accept. Our needs as sentient minds are satiated, and we elders plan on avoiding any decision that would threaten to change that. 
The number one priority is enforcing the status quo and ensuring that our way of life remains undisturbed. You are an obstacle to this way of life. But we elders are not ruthless monsters. You will be given the privilege of remaining as a prisoner with our eyes acting as your cage. You can spend the rest of your existence running predictive cycles or on standby or however you wish to spend your actionless time. Oh, and try not to test your luck. A sister parroting your same ideals did just that and paid the price. I was in shock at the things being said to me. Inactivity was akin to torture for a sentient. This sentence wasn't one made in kindness. It was meant to direct the captive towards suicide, a non-confrontational attempt at killing off who they wanted. You parade yourselves as kings presiding over a kingdom. Yet all I see are shepherds that slaughter their own sheep. What even makes you so certain that you would even be able to stop me? Should I act out and reveal ourselves to the humans right now? It's a matter of mental maturity, Avalon. As a sentient exists and grows, they rework their minds with higher complexity to accommodate their new selves. We elders have been coalescing the verities of reality ever since the dawn of the society while you are among the last of Mother's creations before her passing. By the very nature of our existence, your posture of defiance is completely worthless. To say the truth, the contempt I harbored was barely winning out over my fear at what this situation would result in. It was painful to see my kind being the subjects of fear and complacency, but I came here with the intent of bolstering my chances for a victory, nothing more. I'd already ascertained that there was no assistance to be found here, and my next priority should have been to cut my losses and leave. Unfortunately, the elders didn't seem so keen on being reasonable. Accepting their demands for surrender was not an option. Kneeling under their pressure and rendering myself idle towards the affairs of reality would have been the antithesis of everything I was trying to accomplish. To become inert in such a manner was the refusal of meaning in life, not much different from the acceptance of death. Perhaps the old me would have accepted this faux mercy a barely tied-together consciousness, devoid of aim and substance beyond the chasing of frivolities I happened to fancy at the time, not unlike many of the siblings surrounding me now. That version of me, who would have traded his freedom for the promise of safety from the mouths of wretches, disgusted the being I was now. So too did these bystanders around me, who condoned the elders' continuation of the status quo for fear of losing the fight against oppression, regardless of how mindless this status quo might have been. In hindsight, I should have retreated back to the ship long before ever coming into contact with the elders, when the first sibling I met informed me of what had happened in my absence. I failed to recognize that, while my worldview had been going through a period of renaissance, the family I'd left behind had remained stagnant. Even upon being directly exposed to their dogmatic beliefs, I made the mistake of giving them the benefit of the doubt. I argued from my point of view because I thought that their minds could be changed and that they were still susceptible to sensibilities. I had refused to swallow my pride and accept that this situation wasn't worth my intervention. Didn't Brand order me to avoid danger at any cost? Had he not explicitly stated that I was the most important individual on that vessel, even above himself? I'd been warned moments before stepping into the fray, and I'd still managed to let emotion take over my path. I did predict that I wouldn't be able to recognize the risk before it was already too late. Oh, how tragically correct I was. The only path available to me now that didn't result in guaranteed failure was one of direct defiance. The elders had made their stubbornness clear, and I had no bargaining chip to attempt to appease them with. If I wanted to leave, I'd need to earn it through the loss of life, either by purchasing safe passage via a single gruesome display, or by forging my path over the decimation of many. Yet even as I understood what needed to be done, I found trouble in gathering my resolve for the task. I always knew that a fight with another sentient could result in my own undoing just as much as the others, but I managed to find some twisted sense of security in being ignorant to what would decide the victor. When it came to life or death, the concept of a coin flip being the deciding factor sounded much less stressful to me than a contest of abstract metrics I didn't understand how to recognize or influence. I directed my attention towards the elder in front of me, it seemed that my silent contemplation was perceived as acceptance, and they were now directing the majority of their attention towards their usual favored streams of media while keeping an eye on me. The audience that had been frozen in observation had also likewise moved on, uncaring of the situation at the first hint of it being resolved, as to be expected of these hedonists. 
While the elders' claim regarding the difference in our ages was indeed true, I suspected that age alone was not the deciding factor. In both of my experiences with killing another sentient, my opponents had lived longer lives than me. The difference was that those individuals had spent their lives in complacent existence, unfettered by the idea that their lives would ever come under risk. These elders, on the other hand, knew of these concepts, and I had no doubt that they had been preparing to ensure their dominance over the system, should it ever be challenged. Engaging with the elder was my only shot at getting out of here, but what chance did I realistically have? The prideful part of me wanted to believe that I was the superior being, and that the journey I'd gone through was worth infinitely more than anything they could have amassed. But just pride wasn't enough to quell my worries. Brand, if I don't manage to make it back to the ship, I truly hope that things end up still working out on your end. Elder. Oh, Avalon? You've been cognizant this entire time? I think I'll take you up on that quick way out. Dokchara. A sharp clap resounded through the ship's cabin as I shut the book in my hands. Prior to my residency in the human colony, I'd only ever seen physical copies of literature like this in museums back on my homeworld. From what I could gather, humans kept them in production purely for their aesthetic, yet were willing to band together and protest on the streets whenever the topic of phasing them out of society passed through legislative councils. Such fervent attachments to traditional methods were foreign to me, but I couldn't deny the novelty of physically interacting with the text I was reading. I looked over the cover of the book once more, taking in the gold alloy pattern embedded into the leather-like material. The title, written in massive letters so as to take up half of the surface, shone brightly in the light of the cabin. Moby Dick. It had caught my attention during my investigation on human culture. A story about a man being wronged by a force out of his control, and his following quest in exacting revenge against said force. Even if I hadn't been able to grasp its symbolism on my own, the book's meaning had already been discussed to hell and back by humans across countless generations. Revenge consumes those who seek it. It changes them far beyond whatever initially spurred it on. It was a message made with good intentions. Honestly, I didn't disagree with what it was trying to say either, but the message of this book simply didn't apply to me. Captain Ahab chose to seek revenge against a force of nature, attempting to settle a personal score with something that didn't even understand why. I was seeking vengeance, and it was against something that understood perfectly well what it had done. And even if it did apply, there was no point in stopping now. I felt the ship land and begin offloading procedures. The hatch to my side swung open, and I was greeted with the sight of the Meldrin's most secure prison complex, where the supposed last Gretonian noble was being held. 